no matter how many times we've messed up, how many times we blow in it, how many times we've wandered away, he's made provision every time for me to come back home. This morning as we close, I want to read you a retelling of the prodigal, a story uh, by the author of a guy by the name of Philip Yancey, who's a great Christian author, has some amazing books out there. But I want to, I want to read to you kind of a retelling of this story, a little more modern, a little more in our day. And I hope today that you hear the hope that's found in the concept of coming home. Her name was Krista, and she grew up on a small cherry farm in Traverse City, Michigan. She was a wild child who dismissed her parents as old-fashioned because of how they responded to her piercings and tattoos. One night, Krista and her parents had a huge fight, and at the end of it, she slammed the door and said, I hate you then acted on a plan she'd been rehearsing for months in her mind. She ran away to the big city of Detroit. Within a few hours of arriving in Detroit, she met a man who seemed warm and nice. He drove the most expensive car she'd ever seen and was willing to take her in. This nice man taught her a few things that would make her valuable on the streets. And because Krista was young, she brought in top dollar for her services. As time went on, she got a little older. She wasn't bringing in top dollar anymore. So she was thrown out on the street with no money and a drug habit to support. And my blood will dry underneath my nails And the wind will rise up to fill myself can't doubt and you can't hate but I know no matter what it takes I'm coming home I'm coming home tell the world that I'm coming home let the rain wash away all the pain of yesterday I know my One night, she thought back to the sunny spring days when she used to be lying beneath the cherry trees. Realizing that renting her body on the streets of Detroit was no way to live, she decided she would head north, maybe move to Canada and start over. On her way home, she, or on her way north, she figured she'd try something that she thought had no chance of actually working. She mustered up enough courage to give her parents a call. No one answered. She left a message telling them she was going to be passing through Traverse City on her way to Canada. If they wanted to see her, she'd be at the bus station around midnight. After hanging up, she thought leaving the message was a stupid thing to do because odds were they were happier now that she was gone. As the bus headed north, she could see the sign saying the bus was getting closer to Traverse City. She ran through the possible scenarios in her mind. Nobody there to meet her, someone there but only to shame her and condemn her. Finally, the bus arrived in Traverse City and she heard the bus driver say, 15 minutes at this stop. 15 minutes. Still far away from where I belong But it's always darkest before the dawn And you can't die you can't hate, but I know no matter what it takes, I'm coming home, I'm coming home, tell the world that I'm coming home, let the rain wash away all the pain of yesterday, I know my All her mental rehearsing didn't prepare her for what she found when she stepped off the bus. 
at midnight in this small town bus depot, she walked and found dozens of familiar faces belonging to aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents. And they were all well wearing these silly party hats. And a huge banner was hanging from the walls. And it said, Welcome home, Krista. And just then, her dad broke through the crowd and he ran up to her and she tried to explain herself, but he, he wrapped his arms around her, making it clear that all he really cared about was his daughter was home. I'm coming home, I'm coming home. Today, if you're here and you feel like that girl, it's time to come home. It's time to come home. And just like that girl, you might be rehearsing in your head, how would I say this? How would I do it? How? It doesn't matter. Do you understand? You have a loving father that will push his way through the crowd and put his arms around you because the ability to be who it is God's called us to be is only found through him. Does that make sense? Too often we try to be good enough and we fail. Me too. I've come to the situation, I'll never, the realization, I'll never be good enough and I'm not going to try anymore. I'm just going to live through him. I'm going to let his power come alive on the inside of me and he makes me good enough. And that option is for everybody here this morning. I don't care what your story is. I don't care how far you've wandered away. Your father is saying, come home. 